This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmith. Welcome to the Weekly. This morning, our guest, Dr. Jim Clark, UCF history professor, New Six political analyst. Great to see you, sir. Good to see you, sir. You're a regular here. I am, yes. And, uh, and I'm starting Good to wonder if perhaps you also have classified documents at your house because this is becoming a reoccurring theme. That may be. There may be some in my attic that from long ago that I've forgotten about. Is this, is this a surprising thing when we see uh, former President Donald Trump having documents, we have um, uh, President uh, Biden having documents in his house and in his library, and then also the newest one with uh, former Vice President Mike Pence also having documents. What, what is going on here? I think uh, our viewers w are, are wondering the same thing. Yeah, I think, first of all, people have pointed out there are probably scores, maybe hundreds of people who have these top secret documents. Remember, when you leave office, often you've been defeated, mm -hmm. as President Trump was. The people packing boxes are the junior most people. Mm -hmm. You don't have the chief of staff packing your boxes, and things get thrown into boxes, the boxes are shipped, and as people pointed out, there are probably dozens of former senators who have secret documents in their basements mm -hmm. that they don't even know that their papers were packed up and shipped to them. So this is not that uncommon. Uh, I think that the Democrats probably made a mistake in making so much of the Trump documents and then they, Biden must have known that he had these papers. So There's classified documents and then there are classified documents, right? I mean, there's such a wide margin of what could be discovered, which fall under the category of classified or top secret. And it could be something that is so minute, no issue, no threat to national security. But then on the flip side, yes, there are serious documents that could potentially be out there as well, right? It's, it's hard to, to yeah. figure out what is out there, what is considered classified and what's yeah, not. Yeah, just enough. There is a pecking order for right. documents and a pecking order of who can see which group of documents. Uh, only a handful can see top secret. Lots of people can see classified. The best example is I think in 1954, Queen Elizabeth came to the uh, United States and had a luncheon before attending a football game at the University of Maryland. And for 30 or 40 years, the menu from that luncheon was classified right. by the State Department uh, and finally released mm -hmm. that she had had whatever it was that day. So um, there are thousands of things that get classified mm -hmm. that really aren't that important. Right, but, but if you turn on the news and if you read uh, front page news, it, this is making front page news. And so is it the unknown of what those documents could be that you think potentially is driving this? Yeah, okay. uh, it's the unknown uh, and it's political. Yeah, It yeah. gives the political parties a chance to call for investigations. Uh, the Republicans, it's kind of gone back and forth. When Trump did it, the Democrats were, mm -hmm. were crying loudly. And then when Biden got caught with them, the Republicans mm -hmm. came down on him and now that Pence has them, nobody quite knows what to do. <laughs> yeah, but they're saying, okay, let's see, who's gonna be the next one that they find documents yeah. at their- and that could their, be, yeah. well happen. Very well, exactly. yeah. All right, well, let's, let's turn now to the, uh, another thing that's, that's driving uh, a lot of conversation in Washington and throughout the national media, and that's the debt ceiling, United States government, 31.4 trillion. Mm -hmm. um, Let's, let's talk about what this means first off. Let's a, a little bit of a, a lesson here in government, a civics lesson, if you will, about what this is and, and why uh, viewers and why folks at home should care that we've reached the debt ceiling. Yeah, uh, the, the national debt has been with us since day one. Mm -hmm. George Washington started with a national debt. Uh, Andrew Jackson actually got it paid down and it looked like we might have gotten rid of it, but we didn't. Um, and of course, with the Civil War, it soared, uh, World War I, World War II, and the last president to make a serious run at this was Bill Clinton, mm. a Democrat, who actually came up with proposals that would have reduced the national debt and controlled it. But after that, it's almost like we gave up. 
yeah. and, and stop paying attention except when we raise the debt limit. Right. Uh, previous standoffs uh, over this, 1995 Bill Clinton, we were at $5 trillion. <laughs> that was our debt ceiling. And then in 2011, under President Obama, it was up to $16 trillion. Now, obviously, in between those years, a, a lot happened. Um, right. You know, you had a financial crash. You also had a war. Um, there, there was a lot going on and why it got to that level. But in, since 2011, so in 10, 12, 11, 12 years, whatever it is, uh, it's almost doubled. But we also had a pandemic to deal with. So th there are a lot of factors here. But I think the bottom line is that you have to look back in history to figure out how this is going to be resolved, right? Yes, you really do. And uh, it's going to be resolved. It right. has to be resolved. Mm -hmm. the, they've shut down the government before. It is not particularly uh, a good political thing. Uh, citizens, you know, don't react well to that. Mm -hmm. we, we kind of sent Congress people to Washington uh, and their job was to keep the government going. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying, well, let's shut it down. So I don't think you're going to have a, a long shutdown if you have any shutdown. The drama is going to last, though, probably at least until June. So this is going to be a talking point for the next several months. Yeah. The Republicans are going to use it. Mm -hmm. They're going to call for budget cuts. But even the Republicans are badly divided. There mm -hmm. are Republicans who want to cut Medicare, and there are others who Republicans who say, don't touch that. Right. There are Republicans who want to cut Social Security, and other Republicans mm -hmm. who say, don't touch that. So the Republicans are not in unison on this. If, if there's a myth out there about what this means for someone watching, right? Let's talk about a myth about Social Security, maybe. If, if they can't come to an agreement, let's say the government shuts down, some people might think that means that my check won't be coming to me. It, no, that's you, not true. No, uh, most things are still protected. Uh, you'll still get your Social Security check. Uh, what it affects, though, are government offices. Uh, you're not going to be able to get a passport mm -hmm. if you want to go to Europe, things like that. If you're a farmer and need some advice on planting your crop, that office is going to be closed. So It'll be interesting to see how the Space Coast, if this ultimately does happen and the government does get, um, the, you know, shuts down, um, how that affects the volume of launches that are happening on the Space Coast at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, I know Elon Musk has said that SpaceX alone is trying to do two a week, a lot of which happen at the Kennedy Space Center. How will that affect future launches? That's something that we'll have to wait and see, obviously. Yeah, the, the Space Center obviously would shut down. Yeah. Uh, the, the National Park over in Brevard County would uh, probably close. Uh, during the last one, uh, they tried to keep some national parks open, and there was a legal question whether mm -hmm. You could, in effect, if you were a park ranger, volunteer to keep working. Mm -hmm. So uh, there'll be a lot of questions, but uh, neither party wins in these shutdowns. As you and I have discussed, um, after the one in, uh, uh, with Bill Clinton, the next year Bill Clinton won re-election. Right. After the uh, one with Obama, the next year Obama won re-election. Mm -hmm. So this is not a particularly... A good political play for either party. What is the fallout, though, if the government defaults on its debt? What, what's the fallout? Oh, nobody knows. It would be. It hasn't had some precedent. It's never happened, and it would be uh, a real question whether uh, people would accept it. That is, would would people immediately panic right. and begin dumping bonds and there, things There has like been that. talk about that and the impact that could have on the stock market. It could be really, really bad. Yeah, we, we just don't know. People may assume, oh, they'll figure this out yeah, in yeah. another day or two. Uh, but if this was to be real, uh, it would be Armageddon. We'd mm -hmm. be unable to pay our bonds. People might start dumping our bonds. Uh, we couldn't keep borrowing. Mm. So it would be a terrible thing for the United States. And it's never really come close to that. Well, unfortunately, we live in unprecedented times, but let's see we if we can, let's move past this. But uh, we do have to take a short break. We're going to have more with Dr. Jim Clark coming up, including some new information about 2022, uh, the midterm election and the landslide victory from Republicans. We're going to have more on that new data coming up right after this.
This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. I'm Justin Warmoth. Our guest this morning, Dr. Jim Clark, UCF history professor, New Six political analyst, joining us. Uh, we just got done talking about the debt ceiling, potential fallout there. Also, classified documents, potential fallout there. Let's go back in time now uh, to 2022 midterms. Obviously, as everyone knows, it was a landslide victory for Republicans, a historic win in 2022. As we get some new voter information, this new data that has come out uh, about the numbers, 53% turnout this, uh, this cycle. In 2018, the last time there was a midterm election, it was around 62, 63%. So fewer people did vote. Um, and also another takeaway is, it, it, based on the numbers, it looks like what led to this is Republicans voted, Democrats did not vote, and hit, in historic numbers, uh, Hispanic electorate seemingly is not in line with what the registration suggests. It is far more red. Uh, and that led to a lot of these flipped counties. Uh, as you look at that, it doesn't surprise you to see these numbers because this is, this is the formula, this is how it happened, right? Yeah. Um, but, but this is the exact playbook and the blueprint that Republicans need going forward in the meantime, Democrats are scrambling to reverse course. Yeah, you have uh, what they used to call uh, you know, old line yellow dog Democrats and people who registered as Democrats, some of them 50 or 60 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and they've gone over to the Republican Party, but they never changed their registration. Mm. And so that's happening with, with Hispanic voters mm -hmm. that they registered as Democrats years ago and now are voting Republican. And so it looks like the figures are off and they're not. <laughs> they are not off. 36% um, turnout for uh, Hispanic voters in 2022, 56% Republican. And that's not obviously counting the NPA vote, which looks like obviously it's slightly more red when it comes to Hispanic voters. And then the Democrats who are voting red, as you pointed out as well. Um, you know, we, we also said after we got these results and we saw Governor DeSantis run away with it, all these statewide elections and just Republicans cleaning up, that something had to change and, and likely someone would have to fall on the sword, if you will, for the Florida Democratic Party. That happened, Manny Diaz, you predicted that he'd be out. He resigned after a number of people called for his firing. <laughs> but, he, but he releases this letter and, and basically says that he's not taking the blame and he says that the National Democratic Party did not care about Florida this election cycle. That's something you also said before uh, the midterms is that there's no money going in. Yeah, and, and the Democrats, the National Democrats were absolutely right. Mm -hmm. They said that uh, the the Chris Demings uh, duo had no chance of winning, and they took their money and they put it into places like Pennsylvania, uh, where they did pick up a Senate seat. Right. So they did the right thing politically. It was a disaster for the Democrats in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Val was able. Val Demings was able to raise money. Mm -hmm. She did pretty well. But Charlie Chris, I think voters saw as a retread. He had run as a as a democrat he had run as a republican he had run as a uh, independent he had been around you know people forget at one time he was on the short list to be john mccain's vice presidential candidate mm -hmm. um so he, neither val uh, and i was a little surprised at that or christ were able to excite the voters mm -hmm. uh, i think val made a mistake in trying to kind of move to the right a little bit running as the police chief which is hardly going to excite the the base of the democratic party uh manny diaz said that what lacked and what needs to change from florida democrats well they need resources okay that's one boots on the ground not enough volunteers out there going door to door canvassing a lot of these people are paid um, and it's a job for them so they're not exciting the base according to him effective messaging and a coordinated campaign Essentially, there are two, three, maybe four different versions of what someone, their values as a Democratic member, um, political, politically, and th there are different 
ways they look, ideals. There's just not a coordinated campaign, and that does not bode well for uh, winning elections. Yeah, well, what they need are candidates. Right. Four years ago, when the turnout was over 60%, uh, Andrew Gillum was running for governor, and Bill Nelson was up for re-election. Mm -hmm. Both of them came within, what, 30,000 votes of winning. They created excitement, they created uh, a dynamic, and, and the turnout proved it, and they almost won. This year with so ho-hum candidates, people just weren't inspired. They need candidates, and uh, I can't think of anyone who is going to run against Rick Scott in two years. And mm -hmm. as you've talked about, there's simply no bench mm -hmm. for the Democratic Party. There's right. no one out there where people are saying, boy, I hope so-and-so runs. Um, uh, nobody's even excited about who's going to be the chair mm. of the party. If, if any of the viewers would like to be chair of the Democratic Party, <laughs> this is their chance. Um, despite all that, Mr. Diaz said, quote, Florida is not a red state, end quote. I think that's something that Governor DeSantis would disagree with and a lot <laughs> yeah. of Republicans would disagree with, at least in, <coughs> you know, today, speaking in today, um, it's, it seems that way. And in the meantime, the governor continues to make headlines, not just in the state, but nationally, as obviously he's getting more calls and a lot. It's the worst kept secret. He's going to run in, in 24, yeah. the yeah. bottom line. When do we expect something to be formal? I think in May, when the legislature adjourns, I think that he's going to use the legislature to advance his agenda, continue to get publicity. This is an amazing thing, Justin. The governor of Florida is getting more publicity than the 49 other governors combined. Mm. Uh, I've never seen anything like this, where he is uh, dominating the national conversation. This week, he had a front page story uh, about him in the Washington Post, big story in the Wall Street Journal. Um, there are some days, I think, he gets more publicity than the president of the United States. Yeah, it's it, and then on the flip side, you know, we have former President Trump, who is the only candidate who has announced that they are running uh, for president in 24 on the Republican ticket. What's the what what number do you think it'll get to on on potential uh, running uh, nominees candidates? Who how many candidates do you think will be? Um, going for that Republican nominee. Yeah, I think there are going to be five or six, maybe seven or eight people running. Uh, for most of these people, you only get one shot. Mm -hmm. And DeSantis realizes that uh, this is going to be his shot. Remember, uh, the next time there's a presidential race, he'll, he will have been out of office for a couple of years. He'll have more trouble raising money. So for a number of these people, uh, like the former Secretary of uh, State, Michael uh, Pompeo, mm -hmm. uh, people like Ted Cruz. Uh, this is kind of uh, of their time. Mm -hmm. And if they don't run now, it's hard to see when they will run. It's going to be really interesting to watch. Yeah. I, I, I remember those 26, 2015, I guess they were, but they were for the 2016 election, those Republican. Um, was it 13 candidates? I'm it it was up to like, tw it was in the 20s. Was it up but, to but the. But it, 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 you know, it, it got smaller and smaller, but those debates were. Um, Cattle shows. They were. And yeah. uh, I imagine that there'll be more of that. So yeah. something to watch in the future. All right, Dr. Clark, we appreciate it. As always, and for more information on politics and everything that we talked about this morning, just head to clickorlando.com. I'm Justin Mormuth for Dr. Jim Clark. Hope you have a great day.